Since we're having an October fest today, Sam found a polka to get, balls roll, get the ball rolling. Activities here, like. 
like dinners, luncheons, decorating, anything like that, so that we can say, hey, you know, um, on this date we're doing this, let's all get together and see what we can do. So um, hopefully um, that way everybody, we're like a nice little family, so everybody can kind of sign on and be a part. Yeah, I'm very excited about all of the plans we have. I think uh, we're getting a, a really nice community of people and uh, people are attending all of these activities. And so we had the uh, end of summer picnic and uh, we're having Oktoberfest today with a lot of great food. And uh, I think that uh, we're also going to have um, an Advent uh, devotional study. Uh, we're going to have um, probably uh, a dinner to on the first Sunday of Advent to begin that season. And uh, just lots of good plans uh, for this fall season into the holidays. Um, so I hope you join us. I hope you sign up uh, to help out. And uh, I'm really looking forward to a lot of these activities with you. Um, I do have uh, a couple of announcements, but we got uh, a note um, from Beverly uh, Melanizer, and I hope I pronounced that right. She's at Traveler's Rest in South Carolina, but she wanted to let us know how she was doing because of all of the storms. She said, Trees were down, that uh, neighbors have cleared them, they have now have a generator and internet. Uh, they're safe with no issues, and uh, they say hello uh, to all the friends here at First Presbyterian Church. But I'm sure that was a harrowing experience, and I'm glad everybody is safe and well. So, uh, greetings, and glad everybody's well. Um, this, uh, this month, um, if you saw our newsletter, our sermon series is on a, a group of books by Thomas More. Today it's called uh, Care of the Soul, but we have four different books, one each week for our sermon series. And, uh, and our Christmas book is called The Soul of Christmas. Uh, also by Thomas More, and that's what we're going to use as a devotional uh, for our Advent devotional study. Um, so, uh, hopefully everybody will, will enjoy that as well. Please join me for our call to worship. O oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We proclaim your name to the whole human family. We praise you in the midst of this congregation. O oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us continue to praise our majestic creator. With hymn number 442 in the blue hymnal, the church's one foundation. <laughs>
reflect on the goodness and majesty of God, we cannot help but recognize our own mortal frailty and failing. And yet God cares for us, emboldened by God's love. We can be honest in confession, assured already of God's grace. So let us confess together. Sovereign God, who are we humans that you pay any attention to us? And yet you have entrusted us to care for all creation. We confess at times we have thought too highly of ourselves and the ways we have twisted our charge to care for creation and permission to dominate and subdue it. We confess the same human tendencies to dominate and subdue other people. It is easy for us to ignore or take for granted our own privilege rather than seeking to dismantle unjust systems of supremacy. Your desire is for peace, but so often we choose comfort and call that peace. Remind us of who we are and whose we are. Remind us of our interdependence with creation and our dependence on you, our Creator. Set our hearts and minds on your will, made known to us in Jesus Christ, Amen. Let us confess our sins silently. Hear the good news, the one who sanctifies. Those who are sanctified are all children of one God. Jesus is not ashamed to call us his beloved siblings and family. Our sin is forgiven. We are made one with Christ and with each other. Thanks be to God. Join me in the Apostles' Creed as it's printed in the bullet. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
so nice having our choir with us. So we're starting during the month of October uh, a series uh, of sermons. Uh, I bought four or five books uh, by a man named Thomas Moore. He's a theologian, uh, a monk, and uh, a psychotherapist specializing in Jungian psychology. Uh, so it's quite, that's probably what attracted me to his books, that combination. Uh, but each one has a different Christian subject, and, uh, and I thought it would be appropriate uh, for the month of October before the season of Advent. Today's book and sermon topic is called Care of the Soul, a guide for cultivating depth and sacredness in everyday life. So our scripture passage comes from John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. It's a short scripture passage. When we think about life today in this modern society, Thomas More thinks that one of the greatest maladies of modernity or modern life is uh, that this is the age of the loss of soul. But when the soul is neglected, when we ignore it, when we don't pay attention to it, it doesn't just disappear, it remains with us. But often, <laughs> symptoms of this neglect appear in the place of spiritual vitality. A loss of meaning or purpose, wondering or aimlessness, perhaps a feeling of being stuck in our lives, a lack of movement, take the place of wonder and awe. Perhaps obsessive thoughts keep us up at night where doubts plague our minds. Obsessions or a focus on materialistic things or distractions or addictions, sometimes anger or frustration, plague our days and nights. A disillusionment of our relationships, friends, family, marriages. I see these symptoms regularly because today's generation rarely seeks out a minister for spiritual help they do seek out therapists quite often. Many psychologists today refer to our time <coughs> as the age of anxiety. Thomas More would see this as yet another symptom for the loss of soul. Thomas More would attribute much of this to the loss of our spiritual connection with our Creator, and with other. So let's talk about soul first. Soul is not something we tend to talk a lot about. We might mention it in a sermon or in a reading in church, but it's really not a daily topic of conversation. It's not even a daily topic in a church setting. But in the language of the New Testament, the soul is a focus. There's a direct connection between soul and life. There's also a direct connection between soul and spirit. In Genesis, we're told that God breathed life into Adam breathing spirit or soul, and we see that same breath in the giving of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, as the breath or wind of God blew through that upper room. The flame settled on all who believed. In Genesis 3.20, we're told that Adam called his wife, in Hebrew, Havah, life, because 
because she was the mother of all life. So, hava means life. The translators of the Hebrew Bible and the Greek, or what we know as the Septuagint, rendered the name hava, and they took meaning hava, which means life or divine life, and they used the word zoe in Greek in that translation. In Latin, Jerome went back to the original Hebrew, and when he translated this name into Latin, it sounded a little more close to the original in Latin, Hava. So in English, it was easily transliterated Hava, Eva, or Eve. So since the New Testament is written in Greek, I thought we would look at that. Greek has three words or three different kinds of life. We have the word bios, which means our physical bodies. Psyche, our psychological or emotions or our will. More cognitive thought. And the third one is the one we're going to talk about in relationship to the soul. Zoe. This is the eternal life from God, the divine connection uniquely possessed by both God's creation and by our Creator. And so an example in John 1, 4, in the very beginning of John, we read, In Him was life, Zoe, soul, spirit, and the life was the light of the world. So when we translate some of these New Testament verses, we often read the word life, but it has so much more significance if we look at that original Greek word. In him was Zoe, not merely life, but our spiritual souls. This is the divine spiritual life, which is everlasting. It is also our vitality. In John 10.10, 10, the word Zoe is used for this type of divine life specifically. I, Christ, have come that they may have life, soul, and may have life abundantly, spiritual life. This spiritual life occurs when our souls receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through grace faith, and we live in the Spirit, and the Spirit lives in us. It is that soul connection with the divine, our reconnection with our Creator. And we are alive and invigorated and vital. We also experience spiritual peace. Just look at the ways we use the word soul in our daily lives. Gives us an inkling to the meaning of soul. We often say that music has soul. We talk about soul food, food that is so good. Soul is revealed in connection and love. God's connection with us our connection with others. This life, Zoe, a divine life, is to live genuinely as God created us to live, not as we think we should live in the context of societies. When we begin to lose our spirituality, our spiritual focus, our connection with the divine, our souls, begin to suffer. I can always tell when this begins to happen. I feel down, sometimes depressed, sometimes not able to connect with others in the same way. We might feel lonely. So many of the psychological symptoms we experience are the result of losing soul, losing that spiritual connection. 
Reconnecting spiritually will not only help us to reconnect with our Creator, but with each other as well. With husbands, wives, kids, friends, colleagues, and strangers. With our Creator. But first, we need to care for our souls. If they have been neglected, they need our attention. This doesn't mean we have to solve all the puzzles of life for the universe. It is an opening of ourselves to the mysteries and to the surprises of Zoe, soul, life, encounters with the divine. Emotional pain is often a sign that our souls are crying out or in need of care. So how is this done? How do we care for our souls? Well, think about that phrase, to care for. It's multidimensional. Our soul's health needs to matter. It deserves our attention. It is how we heal spiritually. So we must first care more, enough to give our souls some time and basic attention. How often during the day do we think, ah, oh, how's my soul doing? What's my soul up to? We must get to know this inner spirituality, this connection. We must at least acknowledge its existence each day as we move through that day. This means we need to give this process some time each day. We need to give it some focus. To get to know the soul is the first step in this loving process, or in this process of loving. Psychology today would rather preach self-love. Oh, we have to love ourselves. I would only go so far as self-acceptance. Acceptance of ourselves as human beings with all of our faults and frailties, all of our mistakes, which are only opportunities to learn and grow. Unfortunately, the broader psychology of this age has often led to the culture of narcissism. It's taken it a bit too far, that focus on me. Whereas most religions throughout the ages teach quite the opposite, to let go of ego, to focus on one's soul is very different than a self-focus. It's a paradox. It leads to letting go of control and opens opportunities for other. Other beginnings with God, creation, or other humans. Americans love the idea of romance, of love, but perhaps they don't really understand what love truly is. They see the infatuation, the butterflies, the expectations, newness. But what if love was not the result of relationship, rather relationship and love were the event of the soul. It's quite the opposite. So many never truly experience what God would call intimacy in our most important relationships. Intimacy not merely being physical, but being truly present for one another and all of that entails being ourselves and living genuinely with others, being accepted and accepting others 
unconditionally. Experiencing empathy for another. Forgiving one another. True intimacy is a soul connection. And that connection is love. It also includes all of the difficult times in life to be present in the good and the bad, in the joys and the struggles, in the happiness and the sadness. We must care for our own souls and help them to heal in order to care for others. Love, in this sense, is not blind. Rather, it allows us to see the other as God intended. To see another for who they were truly created to be. Intimacy, being mindful and present with other, also changes our concept of time. Losing our human perceptions of time and moving to only now, providing a glimpse of eternity, not forever, but the presence of the divine in the now. Intimacy and love is remaining present in joy, sadness, struggles, arguments, disagreements, even during mundane daily routines. And so when we think about relationships, no matter how long we might have them, perhaps we just meet somebody. If we care for our soul, if we heal, if we are able to be present for one another and allow the Holy Spirit to be present in our lives and to work through us, relationships are more than greeting another, more than simply being present, they are soul connections. Connections with others, friends, family, significant others. When we think about creation, we think about God's connection with us, for we are part of God's connection. So, there are multiple layers of experience of others, of soul connection. The first one is with other human beings. The second one is connecting with God's creation, for we are a part of that creation. We are not separate from it. And to live in harmony with that creation is often healing for the soul as well. And the final one is our connection with the divine, connection with our creator, with God. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus blessed us with the Holy Spirit to reignite that connection. And yet, our eyes are often not open to that spiritual connection. We rarely acknowledge our own soul, let alone the Spirit of God within us. So sometimes we just need to remind ourselves. Sometimes ritual helps. Coming to church, you look through our bulletin, you know what's about to happen every single Sunday. We have different hymns, different readings, different sermons, and yet it has a format that we fall into naturally because we know it so well. It is our Presbyterian Christian ritual each Sunday. But perhaps we should create a ritual, a daily ritual, little time to think about our souls, the Holy Spirit, God in our lives, could simply be reading scripture, saying a prayer, spending some quiet time with God while you're driving around. Caring for our souls inherently means that healing needs to take place. And I think that's true for each and every one of us. Above all, we cannot do this alone, and we are not meant to. 
spiritual healing cannot occur without the presence of our Creator. We simply have to acknowledge the presence of the Spirit in our lives and the work will begin. The healing process will begin. We will find that peace that can only be found through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me in our hymn, number 383 in the blue hymnal, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. As we come together today for communion, remember 
the very first communion, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper in that upper room when Jesus broke bread with his disciples. And he said, whenever you do this, whenever you break bread together, remember me. And he shared with his disciples, and they talked about those final days. And so the early churches would have communion, and they would break bread together. And they would share all they had to eat and drink with one another each time they worshiped together. And so today, uh, after church, please join us uh, downstairs for our meal. And, um, you know, we will break bread together. In fact, you've got quite a choice of bread. Uh, so <laughs> pick your favorite uh, and, um, and enjoy one another's presence. As we break bread today, uh, in sharing communion, we also remember that night. Jesus took the bread with his disciples and he broke it and he said, remember me whenever you break bread together, whenever you do this. And then he took the wine and he poured it, and he said, This is my blood shed for you. Drink ye all of this. And so, all are welcome to join us at this table so that we might commune together, so that we might live in community, in communion with one another and with our Creator. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you bless this bread and wine. Help us to remember you. Heal our souls. Heal our connection with you spiritually. As we eat this bread and drink this wine, help us to remember all that Christ has sacrificed for us, all the promises that are fulfilled the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and open our eyes to your presence with us each day. Amen.
body of Christ. Blood of Christ shed for us. Let us pray and give thanks. Lord God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together as one community of believers to come together through the Holy Spirit to celebrate you in our lives, and to reconnect spiritually to one another and our Creator. In your name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our hymn number 439 in the blue hymnal, In Christ There Is No East or West.
together and pray for one another. I do want to let everybody know that uh, Marlene is in the hospital. She wasn't feeling well, but hopefully it's not too serious. Are there other prayers? I'd like to ask for prayers for a close cousin of ours. Uh, we just learned on Friday he has a torn aorta. It's inoperable, and it's only a matter of days. So we could really use your prayers for that family. Definitely. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is uh, so prayers, definitely, for peace. Other prayers. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we, we give you thanks. Thanks for all of your blessings, for being present with us during times of joy, times of struggle, times of sorrow. Give us your healing power. Heal our souls. Help us to reconnect with you and with one another. We pray that you work through each of us so that we might do your will to help others, to love others, as you would have us do. <coughs> we know that all is possible through you. We pray that you give us healing or peace you be with families who are experiencing grief or anticipated loss. Be with individuals who are anxious or worried or troubled or suffering. And allow us to experience your peace. We pray the way you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in our closing hymn number 441, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord.
grace before our meal. Let us bow our heads. Lord God, we thank you for the gifts of love and soul and spirit. We give you thanks for this food, for one another in this community, for this opportunity to share and to reconnect. We ask that you bless this food, that you give us strength and vitality so that we might better do your will and openly allow the Holy Spirit to work through each and every one of us. Amen. Now may the Lord God bless you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.